Hey everybody, this is Charlie from Charlie Cobra Reviews, and this is our review for Zombieland 2 Double Tap. You know, I really enjoyed the beginning of the movie. Just like the trailer of them whooping lots of zombie ass in front of the White House, uh, you know, those scenes in the beginning or whatever, kind of this montage just showing them, you know, uh, shoot a bunch of zombies in front of the White House was really awesome, and I like how the uh, trailer didn't really give away too much of the plot of the movie uh, by overly showing that scene. Um, you know, as the movie went on, however, that's when I noticed that it was starting to recycle the plot of the first movie with them, uh, you know, house shopping for a new place to live and, uh, you know, then the girls leaving them only to need to be rescued. Uh, you know, the movie isn't all bad and there are a couple of solid laughs, but some of the comedy seems to fall a little flat and the same average zombie cliches or tropes work their way back in. You know, I actually agree with some critics who said that for a sequel that was 10 years in the making, it kind of felt like it was rushed uh, together. Um, but I have been seeing a lot of zombie movies lately, and I gotta say that this was still an above average zombie movie, and movie, and it was pretty entertaining. Also, I'm pretty sure it's the only big budget zombie movie uh, that came out in theaters at the time. Uh, you know, when I first reviewed this movie, I gave it a 6 out of 10. And uh, if you like the first Zombieland movie, you'll definitely like this one. Uh, next will be the spoiler section review. Uh, you know, this movie was pretty entertaining when I saw it in theaters, but I was more than a little disappointed in the movie as a whole, especially when it was 10 years in the making and because of how much I loved the original movie. Uh, as I mentioned above, uh, you know, this movie started off strong with the introduction of uh, how the zombies were changing or evolving. Uh, they introduced uh, three types. Uh, they were the homers, which were so dumb they were almost not a threat. Uh, Hawkings, which were smarter than the average zombie. And ninjas, which are the silent and stealthy types. You know, they did this whole montage of them whooping zombie ass on the lawn of the White House, which was really awesome too. And, uh, you know, the movie was going smooth, uh, but you know, I didn't like how the plot felt recycled because of the girls leaving them and stealing their car just like they did in the first one. You know, I could see a lot of people being annoyed with the uh, dumb blonde character, Madison, but to me, her scenes were generally pretty funny, and I couldn't help but bust out laughing with that seatbelt scene. Is boom. <laughs> uh, you know, the one character that I never really liked in the movie was uh, Avon jo Jogia's uh, character, or Jogia, that character, Berkeley. You know, he was just a, a plot device that got the story moving and never really did anything except be a pacifist hippie who played the guitar and the love interest for Little Rock. You know, she totally winds up stealing the car from Wichita and leaving her stranded. You know, a lot of the movie, I think, probably sounded better on paper than it wound up coming out in the film. You know, like, for example, the new type of zombie uh, that they also called, called the T-800s after Terminator, were tougher to kill. They showed uh, how it dodged bullets like Neo from Matrix and even took a lot of bullets and kept on going until it had its head smashed in. Um, but the movie lost a lot of these good things along the way. I mean, the homers come out again in a few scenes. Uh, they mention a Hawking, but it didn't really do anything special. And they never even showed a ninja the whole rest of the movie other than that introduction. Um... Also, the T-800s, who were so unkillable earlier, are shown to be easily uh, killable later. You know, when the gang's at the hippie stronghold Babylon, uh, which in itself is ridiculous, uh, you know, they do a plan to take out a horde of uh, T-800s coming their way. And uh, there's a part where they're being swarmed by them, and they have no weapons other than melee ones and are easily killing all the T-800s that are around them. Yeah, the whole hippie stronghold place was a big stretch for me, too. I mean... They had walls to protect them and rules for new people like no guns, which they confiscate and melt. But there's no way they could be there for 10 years with no weapons surviving in the zombie apocalypse. Uh, you know, just like the character Madison surviving in the mall, living in a freezer in Pinkberry for 10 years. I mean, it's just a lot of logic that went out the window, especially for a movie that, you know, bases off with one of the characters having these rules to help him survive. Um, but still, it was an above-average zombie movie, and that's why I gave it a 6 out of 10. Uh, especially the, uh, uh, you know, doppelgangers that copied, uh, you know, Jesse Eisenberg and uh, and Woody Harrelson's characters. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Luke Wilson and uh, that other guy. Uh, 
um, Thomas Middleditch, you know, they were very funny in contrast or in comparison to uh, to their counterparts. A regular couple of doppelgangers, those guys. So once again, uh, thanks for taking time out of your busy day to check out this review. Uh, this was movie number 19 of our 31 Days of Halloween Movie Challenge, so stay tuned for the next scary movie review. Um, remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and remember to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.